have in front of you a white paper, a little sticky note, and the flyaway paper, the, the prayer paper. And you'll need, if you don't have right now, you'll need a pen or a pencil. Um, so if you need to do that, to raise your hand and we'll find you one. So burning bowl, why do we do this? And it's the idea that, um, that we release any of those elements within us that we don't want to hold on to anymore. We want to transmute and, and move. And because we know nothing's ever lost, but it can be transformed, right? So that fire is a symbol of that. It turns that back into an energy and, and shifts our state of mind, our souls, our mind, and our body. Anything that doesn't fully align with the person that um, we know we already are, <laughs> right? Or the one that we are working on trying to be. So everyone has something sometimes that activates them or triggers them, whichever word <laughs> you want to use there. And those things can be, you know, recognitions of our, our past, our present, you know, may, maybe even something that we've made up a story about <laughs> that maybe we don't know that it's a story, but it starts to come, oh, I, that's how my interpretation is. What do I do with that? I want to um, just play a little bit extra um, this year. And you have a sticky note. We're gonna work with the sticky note first. So if you find your sticky note, it's that little yellow square. And if you take a moment, and I'm gonna give you an example from myself because I've already done the exercise. All right, I'm gonna give you my examples so that you have something that maybe will help you come up with your own examples. But the sticky note, if you take a moment and think of a, a person, or a character um, that you admire in some fashion, or that you like those attributes. You could call it your own personal avatar, right? But if you can, that's what we're gonna develop is your own personal little avatar. But it can be a real person. It could be a fictional person. <laughs> it could be something that you totally made up. <laughs> it doesn't matter, all right? but it's attributes of that person. So for me, I pick, there's a character in a TV show called The Len that I know I've talked to you guys about before because she just, I really like this character. So I picked her because I really, really like her. And for me, she's empowered, compassionate, a curious learner, an activist, honorable, an integrated leader, powerful. Come up with three to six characteristics of that person. So you're going to write whoever it is, right? Or whatever it is. It could be a unicorn from a fairy tale. It doesn't matter <laughs> as long as it has attributes that, that you are recognizing that you like, right? And I'll tell you why we're doing this after you have some time. So just take a moment, just a, a, you know, a moment of quiet. You can participate. No, 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 you, we're just gonna do the activity first.
So go ahead and look at what you wrote. Look at those beautiful attributes. And recognize that there is no way for you to recognize those beautiful attributes if they're not in you. That's why I said we're creating our own avatar. So even though we're recognizing that name as somebody either that we know from the past or the present or a fictional type character, or some kind of character we even made up. <laughs> Those traits, that's a mirror for you. That's who you really are. Or who you're aspiring and what you're recognizing <laughs> is in, inside of you. Sometimes it's really hard to recognize those things, right? Yeah. So, for example, one of the reasons I added this activity um, is because you guys know I've been joining that minister's meeting for the last few months. That's once a week. And I do a lot of listening, and sometimes I type in the chat. But it's not too often I actually open my mouth. And I, I did this time, and it was just, you know, everybody was bantering ideas. It was, you know. It shouldn't have been a big deal to banter ideas. And yet I found myself pulling back on what I would have normally shared, you know, or what I, what was actually running around in my head. I had to think about that. I'm like, what the heck, <laughs> right? What, what's that about? So in feeling that, and this is what we're going to hopefully put in our fire today, is what parts don't allow us to fully recognize those beautiful traits in yourself. You know, so when I sat with, well, why the heck did I cut myself short and didn't really say everything that I wanted to say? The, the words of I am worthy or I'm not smart enough or I don't have enough experience, all of those kind of things came to the surface. It's like, well, what's that about, right? <laughs> what is that about? And then you sit longer. And what is it that came up? And I realized, <clears throat> sorry, I realized there were a couple, more than a couple instances in my young life, especially, you know, up through college times, where I would express something and they get told by people that were closer to me, oh, well, you don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't matter that you did a all that research for 15 weeks, your thesis statement is just not correct. There is no way that could possibly be. You must be listening to people that don't know what they're talking about. You, you, you're too much of a, uh, um, what was the word? Whatever the opposite of, you know, you, you're too whatever, you know, you're not real enough. You're not being real enough. So those things, even though those are a long time ago, right? If we don't recognize those, they can come up in moments when you think everything's okay, <laughs> right? Which is what happened with me the other day. And I think that happens to all of us more often than maybe what we recognize. It doesn't have to be, so, I mean, that was a tiny moment, but it made me think and realize there's something in there that I can put in that bowl today. <laughs> I can put those ideas right in there, the ideas of unworthiness, and not smart enough, and even put in actual things that I remember that had happened that stuck in my brain that may have, made, you know, that stuck too long, <laughs> that are still in there, even though they were from years and years and years ago. That's the release. The release is not a magic button to say, I'm going to throw this in the fire. My life's going to be really cool right now. <laughs> the release is the beginning of a lot of work sometimes. It's the recognition that you are ready to head those things and look at them straight in the eye and say, that's not what I am. What I am are all the attributes that I put on that little piece of paper. So what I'm gonna invite you to do is, is to look at the times that maybe you didn't feel those ways in this past year, 
you know, ways that, that you didn't think that, that that was really you. Or maybe you're looking at those attributes and going, oh, I wrote those down because I admire them in somebody else, but I don't know that they're in me, <laughs> you know, and, and what is that about? So if you would take that on as your meditation today before you come to the burning bowl. Now, the red paper is whatever you want to write down as the, the poof moment. What is it that we're going to say, I want to transform this and I know I am not that. And then in front of the little bowl, you have these little, these little guys and they all have a circle on them because it's the burning bowl, right? And it's a little reminder. So for me, I wrote my avatar's name at the bottom and I'm gonna hang that up on my computer at home so that that's my reminder through the year that I am the I am's in that and not whatever I poofed up. And then if you'd like afterwards, the white paper is for you to journal or to create your own I am statements about what you'd like to work on. A couple of last things I'd like you to consider that you can use your white paper for. First is the idea of creating those affirmations from your avatar. Things like I am worthy or I am powerful. And you can see that the gratitude, our gratitude basket from the last year is up there. We're ready to start a new one. And on your, on your white papers, if you'd like to think about some anticipatory gratitude, what are some things this year you fully expect to recognize and be grateful for. So for example, I know sometime in February, <laughs> my son and his wife are expecting a baby. So I am anticipating being very grateful for being a part of that experience. It could be things that you don't know are really gonna happen, that you just kind of expect. I fully expect to be grateful walking around some trees and crunching leaves sometime this year. What do you anticipate being grateful for? Close by um, our ceremony by reminding us how we started, that this is a fresh start, centered in divine. We create a fresh new life. 